Hey guys, 9-11 today, never forget. Uh, and that's half staff for my flag. It's as good as it's gonna get. I can't get it any lower, so. But uh, yeah, horrible day. Lost 343 firefighters, uh, 37 police, I believe. I could be wrong on that one. Um, and lots and lots and lots of people. Um, so yeah. Um, so I haven't made a video in a while. And uh, that's really because everything I've been doing is kind of boring. And I'm just, I'm not going to say that this vi video is not going to be boring. Um, because it's probably, it probably will be. I'm basically working on this, trying to get it blocked out straight. Uh, and I had, turn this fan off. You can see it's a beautiful day here. Um, yeah, it's really important. The judges are of that quality. It says it's 84 outside, but I'm finding that hard to believe. It doesn't feel like it's 84. <laughs> so we got over here. Got back from the craft store, and I'll tell you, a lot of yeah, people wouldn't go that way to go to the car display, but I would. This thing's going to be cool. Uh, so, progress on the car. I've got it all blocked out for the most part like I wanted it. I went ahead and... I'm, I'm doing detail stuff. Uh, this stuff here, getting it all blocked out to where there's not any little imperfections and stuff in, in that area. Um, these little guys under here that were, you know, where I welded through to here. Um, stuff like that. Firewall up here, getting that all smoothed out as, as best I can, which that's as good as it's going to get. I mean, I'm not going to lather that up with filler to try to make that thing straight. So, I um, mean, it's a firewall. So, it's going to be nice, a lot nicer than it was, you know, from the factory. So, I'll leave it at that. Um, what else? I got to do, still got to do that little area. Um, yeah, just lots of little stuff like that, just little odds and ends, uh, making sure that these, you know, are. To where there's no transition there um stuff like that so um i'm still seeing guys that are struggling with water in their lines from their compressor and so any of the new people that are that are coming on that haven't watched some of my videos in the past with the uh condenser that I have I just want to say that uh, again that's the best thing I've ever done for this compressor I get no water zero I mean zero water out of this thing and I'll, I'll show you this so this thing runs we you know we all know how it runs it comes over well then it goes up here and comes across and goes into my regular air well, because of that condenser, I get no water in any of these lines. Well, this is set up specifically for painting. And you can see how it'll come through here, come up, then come back out here, then up, and then it has to go through this motor guard, then it has to go through a desiccant before, you know, so, so for basically that's just extra protection for me to make sure I don't get any water when I'm, sh when I'm shooting uh, paint or primers or whatever. But I've had this motor guard deal on here for... Man, I mean a long time since I set this whole deal up. This is the exact same motor guard. It's never been replaced, never been changed, nothing. And I'm going to take this out of here. If I can do this with one hand, I'm not sure I can. Probably can't. Let me grab me bring it right back. All right, so this is that motor guard filter. Basically, they call it a toilet paper filter because this little filter looks just like a roll of toilet paper. And so it just pulls out. And so I want you to see this. Now, this has been in here for a long time, long, long time. It's still brand new. It doesn't have any, I mean, it's untouched. So... 
Why am I saying this? Because like I said, I see guys buying a lot of these desiccant filters and a lot of a lot of stuff that costs a lot of money. Now this stuff in here, you gotta replace that. This uh this, this desiccant filter here, you have to put this little guy in there uh, every time it goes bad. And I replaced this one, but I'm not sure that it ever had went bad. But that's before I put that uh, dryer system on there. So ultimately, these right here are not even really necessary. This is just money that I didn't probably need to spend. Literally, all I needed in my opinion, is that uh, condenser. And these, like I said, are just overkill at this point. They're really not even being used. All that air coming through that line has to run through here too. This never gets not one single bubble, not one drop of moisture in it. So, and even from there, it has to go up and still come through all that. So. Ultimately, what I'm getting at is, uh, I don't know. So basically, that condenser has done more for the life of this, you know, or to, to, to reduce the water than anything I I've, I've could have ever done. These are not cheap, but I've got, I've got, I've got probably, I've got 86 or 90 dollars in that that whole system there for for the the condenser, and then. I think those are what 50 to so dollars a piece I think so say 150 170 dollars something like that that right there one time is going to take care of 99.9% .9 of your water in my opinion um, it just works so good um, I don't ever have to replace that there's nothing in there that's you know that, that desiccant or anything like that that's the same deal there's nothing in there that ever has to be replaced um, so the only thing that needs to be replaced are those so if you spend the money on those and I believe I've probably got hundred and fifty dollars in those right there so had I bought just that first I probably would have never needed that I mean those those never get touched so Anyway, like I said, I, I still see a lot of people struggling with the water problem and um, maybe they don't have the $150 to lay down, but I see them buying stuff like that, that, uh, you know, you're going to have to replace all that desiccant, and I promise you that desiccant stuff is not cheap. That's how they're getting you. It's like buying a printer and then, you know, buying the ink. Hell, the ink costs as much as a freaking printer does, so it's kind of a racket. Anyway, so that's my two cents on that. I'll stop beating that horse now. Anyway, so yeah. Um, next stage on this is to uh, get this thing primed. Um, I need to either put a little bit of uh, epoxy down on just the metal breakthroughs or I need to do the whole damn thing. I haven't figured out which one I'm going to do yet. But uh, I've got some breakthroughs on the firewall down here that i got to re-epoxy. Um, all these areas in through there I got to re-epoxy so my thought is just re-epoxy this whole daggum thing and then start doing my slick sand and high build and get it all um, put together and done like I said I'm trying to finish that door get it straightened out so I can epoxy over it these I've got to get back into 220 um, may epoxy those because the epoxy is you're gonna have a chemical um, bond with the, the filler instead of just a tooth which from what I understand is it's either as good or better um, because that that stuff is shrinking down and grabbing a hold of you know your your primer your paints or whatever and it's it so I don't know all right guys all right guys so I have a question just you can help me out here and uh, Daryl you can help me out too so this is the um, this is the driver's side door. Okay, I'm looking at these mirrors because I thought, you know, I probably ought to try to make sure these holes are right. I looked at this a long time ago and then forgot about it. So, um, he's got the old style Chevy mirror. It's got a little bow tie emblem on it. It looks like a correct mirror to me. Uh, and it would cover all of the holes there. 
Looks like this has probably got uh, the little remote uh, mirror control, which this doesn't have, but regardless, that still covers that up, no big deal. The problem is, that I'm finding, is obviously the way that works is that little piece right there slides into there, and then between that gasket, it slides down onto that. So, you better set this down where it doesn't slide off and break. I'd be, be my luck with things work for me. So, this little guy here, take the first hole, which looks like somebody's made that hole, but I'm not sure. So, it doesn't line up. There's, there's, there's nothing there. Okay, you move it up to here. That's probably not going to work, and that doesn't line up. You flip it over. That hole lines up. That doesn't line up. Move it to that. That hole lines up. There's nothing there that lines up. So none of this works. So I don't know if he's got the wrong mirror, or if these holes are wrong, or what's going on. Same with this side. And this is the passenger side. Daryl, I'm not even sure you want a mirror over here. If you do, then we need to figure that out now. Uh, we actually should have figured that out a long time ago, but regardless, I'm still at a point where I can fix this. If I need to weld these shut and do something with it, I can and still fill this while it's in this stage. This is going to suck. I can do it. It's, it's just going to suck because it's going to screw up what I've done already. So... I'm not sure, like I said, if you guys can help me out with this not being maybe a factory original mirror or what. But this one's got multiple, multiple holes in it. And like I said, this is the passenger side door. Um, so, and I'm not sure if they came with a passenger side door only or maybe they both had them. I don't know. Same situation on this. None of these holes line up together. Okay, none of them, literally. Any way you go, any way you turn it, there's no two holes that will line up. So, my question is, and it looks like these are possibly the factory holes, these little three here, and there's some kind of little indention there, like something's supposed to line up or drop into that. These holes, I have no clue. Looks like somebody may have popped those. Um, these all look factory on this side, except for this one. But again, I don't know. I don't, this is this is the only mirror that you gave me to work with, so it doesn't it doesn't fit. I mean, it looks like it should and could if it had the right base on it, but right now it just doesn't. So you guys, let me know what you think on that, because at this point, before I start priming that, I need to figure that out because I'm probably going to have to weld some more stuff, more more holes closed or something like that. So. Um, and that's probably going to be it for today. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't make it, you know, a whole lot of long video or whatever. Because, like I said, I've just been tinkering on this. Uh, this is pretty much ready for prime. Got all this set up. All this is good here. Got all these all worked out. This here is ready. I mean, it's pretty, pretty smooth. Pretty ready to go. Um, what else? Oh, that over there. I've got to, I've got to prep that. It's been sitting, sitting, and sitting, and it's got shit splashed all over it. So I'm gonna have to wash it up real good with probably some uh, dish soap and water, and dry it off good, and uh, I'm gonna prep it up for some slick sand also. So yeah, that's about it for today, guys. Like I said, I've been tinkering just little odds and ends and getting all the little you know small imperfections that I can see you know little edges and stuff like here that might have been a, a not a, a smooth edge went ahead and, and just sanded all those little imperfections down all the way across here I'm seeing some uh, look what looks like rust areas in there so I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit of uh, either filler or hell I don't know I don't really want to use uh, fiberglass in there but you guys let me know what you think about that too and the slick sand may fill that but yeah I don't know I don't know if it if it'll build that much or not hopefully that's showing hopefully that's showing that because some of those are pretty good pretty deep um, you know and I probably could have welded those but that's being rust I may it may bust right on through that 
Um, and I may need to, to put a little bit of uh, fiberglass filler in there since fiberglass is tougher and then just kind of knock it down. Um, and that may be what I do because I've got I've still got a little hole right here that I need to put some fiberglass in there. A little pinhole there that needs to have some fiberglass uh, to keep the water moisture from getting inside here. So, uh, alright guys, that's it. You guys have a, uh, a good, hopefully you had a good weekend. And um, I'll talk to you the next time. See you.